You're listening to the Unsung Podcast, where we talk about classic albums and decide if they deserve that distinction. And we also talk about some unsung classics in the hopes of bringing them to a new audience. And at the end of it all, we let you decide if we are right or wrong. This is the Unsung Podcast. Welcome to episode number 15. Last week we discussed Ex Military, the debut mixtape by Death Grips, and the public decided that it will indeed be coming into our photography. So, thank you very much to all the ladies and gentlemen who voted Death Grips. It's really, really great to welcome you into our discography. We are very glad that this is the record that represents you. Moving on, this week we're talking about Meshuggah's. Frankly, mesmerising, Catch 33. I hope you enjoy this as much as we did. And by we, specifically, we mean Weaver, but we were all pretty hyped about this record, so yeah, enjoy. You're listening to the Unsung Podcast. I am your host, Mark Fraser, and I'm joined by the only Hugh and Cry tribute act in the world. Uh, to my right Cry is... And Cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to my right is Cry. <laughs> Christ, who's that? Cry. <laughs> Christ, Cry sack. How are you today? <laughs> to my left is Dave Weaver, who is currently hard as a rock because we're about to talk about my sugar, a.k.a. the shug. Yeah. Um, Old sugars. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been waiting for this day. I mean, literally, I think he might just chuck a podcast after this. This is all been leading up to this for Dave. Oh, this is it. This is it, yeah. This is where it's all going to come crashing down or soar tremendously into the sky. <laughs> yeah, if this doesn't get in, we're in trouble. But uh, priapism's notwithstanding. Uh, Dave's here, he's ready to speak. He's he's assembled notes. Yeah, he's assembled <laughs> Which actually notes. looks a little bit like an essay. Well, it's, I know, it's actually got a, a narrative thread through it's, it. I should it's just got read character this. development and everything, it's amazing. Yeah. Is that a script? Really. Well, it does have character. It's got, it's got artist development. It's basically the same thing. You've really blossomed. Everything from Contradictions Collapse in 1991 right up to... <laughs> right, shop. <laughs> Go on. Let's jump in there then. It's what it actually means is Psychic Test Build in 1989. Uh, so, yeah. Oh. Oh God, it started already. So we are talking about Meshuggah and Catch 33 is the record that I have decided we should talk about and that I think should be on our, what is it? Discography. A discography of uh, slightly <laughs> underrated <laughs> classic <laughs> records. So we definitely need a Meshuggah album in this list because Meshuggah are, mm, yes, they're the best metal band in the world. <laughs> <laughs> of the world. They're, they're the best progressive <laughs> band in the world. I mean, they're just the best band in the world. Like, uh, you know, so it would be very foolish to not have an album by the best band in the world. Uh, they're the heaviest band in the world. Uh, yep, yep, I agree. <laughs> uh, like, they're just a band that sound like nothing else. They just fucking fuck with time. <laughs> <laughs> and they fuck with sound. So that's one sense and one dimension. <laughs> there's just, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a thing fucked called, with. There's a thing that Einstein spoke about called the twins paradox. Where it's if you put. One twin on Earth, one twin in a rocket ship, and flew them into space at near the speed of light. Yeah. And round about, and then they came back and landed. The twin on Earth would, would have younger. aged yeah. more than the twin that was in the rocket ship. And it's kind of like that. If you put on Meshuggah versus putting on <laughs> any other metal album, yeah. the person that listened to Meshuggah will be younger because time <laughs> makes less sense. <laughs> That's a very good way of putting it. That's why I've got such youthful um, cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> People do say that about your cheeks. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe you're 31. You look your four years old. Four years you've, got f- you've got four-year-old cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so is, this, wait a minute, is this Lost Profit? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. I mean, right, you get progressive bands that do weird things and everything, and they do like loads of jazzy wank. Dream Theater. Dream Theater, <laughs> kings of jazz wank, uh, progressive Jank. nonsense. But you also get bands that just sound unbelievably heavy and like ridiculously like metal riffs, like Pantera. Uh, and then you get Meshuggah who do both and they do the best bits of both. Mm. And it's just like, oh, I just fucking love them, guys. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, it's come, it's come across, eh? Yeah. Um, They've got so yeah. much groove. Okay. So much groove. groove for fucking years, man. Yeah. Like, all of it is just... Yeah, but I mean, a caveat to that, though, is it's groove that is incredibly disorientating. So it's not just like that kind of groove that you get, you know, since I'm like down or, you know... Mulhaven. Yeah. I mean, you, even well, like, like it's not exactly a groove that you can settle into just a big mosh. You know, it's pretty goddamn difficult sometimes. I mean, to... I've, be, I've seen my sugar live several times and it's very difficult to mosh. Think <laughs> <laughs> about the brain trauma that gets caused. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe um, we should tell people why that is. Uh, why they're difficult to mosh to. Because um, they live on a different plane to us. <laughs> and um, Thomas Hack specifically, specifically lives in a different world entirely. He likes to... I mean, do you know what? Like The thing that they have, though, is that f they pretty much play all their songs in 4-4. Four -four. Like mm -hmm. there's that, always that, is the, 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 exactly on the hands. hands. On yeah. the hands. Again, on the hands. Like, you, he's got that fucking symbol just going... Ch -ch -ch he made, all the time you like, made a comment oh, yeah. about how he always plays eights on the hats so the, yeah. the band can headbang no matter what else <laughs> is going on it's um, all the feet man it's all the feet but the feet are just fuck, I mean that boy can drum um, and this record did not drum yeah I mean what <laughs> but I mean that's kind of the magic of it is like they've got one of the best drummers in the world who you know after this I mean he can play pretty much anything on this live now I mean they don't play much of this live but the album after this, uh, Obzen, he basically he stepped drumming like metal drumming up when he did bleed. Because that's like, how the fuck do you do that on the? And like people can do it now because they've copied him, but he's the first guy to do that. You know, drumming, so he can do anything he wants on the drums. Yeah, we should probably backtrack a wee bit. Okay, this yeah, is yeah. this isn't yeah. like a tip. Like, unlike some of their other albums, it's not a typical album in the sense that it's you know ten to twelve individual tracks. It's it's what they refer to as more of a suite. Yeah. It's like it's like uh forty what, forty three minutes, forty seven, I think, forty seven minutes. Um, and it's like subdivided into the sections that sort of seamlessly change as well, like yeah. to just denote different parts. But some of them are more obviously distinct than others. So, like, uh, Mind Mirrors is, like, quite yeah. apparently different from the others. It's a bit of a kind of palate cleanser. But, yeah, and it, the, the album itself was assembled by uh, Hack and Hagstrom. It wasn't mm. any of their, the other guys yeah. that actually uh, took part in the kind of composition of it in that sense. Um, they, they kind of laid it all out. Yeah, so we should say that he created this sort of drum kit from hell. And that's part of why the... The rhythms and stuff were able to be so confusing at points because they were just assembling it from this drum kit from hell or yeah. they actually used I think a drum kit from hell supreme which is like yeah. an upgraded well, version I mean, of it was, it. It was, it was his, his samples. samples yeah so right. he sampled every individual drum yeah. and then they just like laid them out yeah. digitally and then were able to really rejig them and add extra notes in and bars and stuff like that right left and center and so it became like a really in a way that would probably be hard not so much to play because they can play like you said you can mm. play a lot of it although they only ever played 13 minutes of this live even yeah. when they were touring it yeah. but um it would be hard to write in that fashion in a studio and what they what they probably write is hard anyway but even harder but yeah. being able to just lay it out in front of you and literally do anything mm. um and then work backwards and say right i've done something mental i need to learn how to play it that's one thing yeah and so they assembled this from nothing well, they composed it Yeah, exactly. Like, and then took it to the rest of the band. Imagine right. the looks they got. Yeah, but it's like... You think you think we're going to play this? You get... You get I can go through all the Mishaga albums and go, yeah, there's fucking amazing bits on You'd it. You'd probably really and enjoy like, that, maybe you should. And I, like, I fucking... <laughs> I, yeah, there's so many... Like, all their albums are great. Um, some are better than others. But, you know, you obviously get some uh, metal fans that are like, oh, he didn't even play drums on this record. 
I don't but know. Very few of the recent but, albums have been the drums have been recorded live. It's not until um, the Violent Sleep of Reason recently. Yeah, no, but started. he he no, he did go back to playing them himself though. Yeah, this it was, it was this and the EPI that were just recorded using program drums. It's like a hybrid of the stuff that he does now, isn't it? Like some of it's sampled, but most of it's played. Yeah, and like for instance, I'm not a big fan of triggered drum kits because mm-hmm. I'm just like, just learn to fucking hit the drum. You lazy cunt <laughs> but uh but it's easier said than done when you're this, making up a kit but for this because this isn't just like a band being lazy and like sampling their own stuff they're doing things that they're just totally stretching the boundary of what a band can do and it would be like going to fucking beethoven they're going oh can you actually play that on the violin <laughs> or oh, what are you are you that good in the on the trumpet as well He'd be like, no, I'm just fucking writing shit and it, it sounds good, mate. And like, I'll get cunts that can play it. And that's what Mashuga did here. They're like, he, like maximizing what they can do on paper. And then they also are able to then fucking play it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the trigger drums thing, I get your point. Um, it's obviously within metal, especially, and especially on kick drums. Yeah. It's like a really, really popular technique because to, to get the definition that it takes and the speed of some of these double kick players, they need a sample because the sample is what gives it the click and the slap that, yeah. that lets you hear what's happening. If you but, hear, yeah, if you hear a lot of metal drummers live, they're not that precise when they're doing a the double kick, no matter how good they are. Right, it's and also just with the fair. acoustics of a room, it, it's hard to get that precise definition on a kick drum that's not just going to make what is a, a double kick beat. And yeah. a mush. So having samples helps define that. But I do. I, take I think it works for certain but bands, but for s- some bands fall back on it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Like when I saw Mashuga live a few years ago in the garage, and they just had like this random death metal band supporting them. I can't remember what they were called. They were just so generic, and they were obviously put on there by the label or whatever. And the drummer was just triggered to fuck doing mad fast shit but like it was just so boring it seems really cool um, like, whereas yeah. like something like agrophobic nosebleed use uh, program drums but they use yeah. it amazingly because no drummer could ever play that so <laughs> they do it in a really interesting way <laughs> the berserker whereas <laughs> most metal that i listen to like good stuff yeah i like the organic sound of normal drums this is just a very different record and yeah it just works it really well works on like, this. It, it really suits their sound Everything yeah. about this record is very clinical sounding. Yeah. The riffs are, there's like, obviously the, the distortions get, I don't want to drop the D word, but I'm go, we're probably going to drop it at some point, so. Oh, well, we're going to have to do a whole section on the D yeah, word. We'll come, we'll come to the, the gent word, I guess, but I, I, I mean, apart from being automat- onomatopoeic, it's like. Okay, can I just say that's, that's D-J-E-N-T, yeah. gent. Uh, uh, gent. Just yeah. for folks that are like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like a calling a call set and going, can you say G for gnome? <laughs> <laughs> the D word. K for knockers. Yeah. Uh, but no, like, even, even though, even though it's K heavy. K for knockers. <laughs> it's like Sam, it was the Sam, uh, Sam thingy from uh, Carry On. <laughs> but, I've lost my thought. Uh, Jen. Dient. Uh, the Dient. guitar sound, distortion. Yeah, I mean, it's heavy as fuck, but it's not, it doesn't sound really like a guitar. And, and, a, and a, so there's a reason a lot of these gen bands just play laptops on stage, you know, or Kempers, mm-hmm. you know, like they don't, they, there's no need in having that analog sound at all. It's all digital. I seen a band called Tesseract at Heavy Fest in 2015. Yeah. And they were just playing through laptops. Well, I think uh, Kurt Ballou from Converge had spoken about that as well, said when they were playing festivals, a lot of the bands either had no amps or they had dummy amps, so they were just empty cabs, and yeah. there was literally just a, a like a remote pack going off stage, and there was someone by the side of the stage. Even the pedal changes were programmed, so there'd be a volume push at a certain point, mm. you know, to allow the solo to push through and things like that. So, like that is especially for really technical metal, yeah. that has become like one of the default positions for live performance. Mushaga have been incredibly influential in that, and like so many bands now take cues from Mushaga, or just you know, there's this whole gent movement which basically just want to sound like Mushuga and to a certain extent, you know, bands like Sixth and mm. things like that who are also influential. But so many of them are fucking shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I love metal, you know, Mushuga are my favourite band. Like, not my favourite metal band, they're my favourite band in the world. But there's just so much shit that they copy all the technical parts of Mushuga, but they just don't, they don't capture anything no about essence. what Mashuga are doing because Mashuga mm. aren't copying anybody. Yeah, they came from like thrash and their early stuff like just sounds like Metallica and then it sounds like Metallica skipping. But you've seen them evolve um, just into this like incredibly organic machine and it's interesting that... But they've become synonymous 
with incredibly difficult music. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally like you know, people. Will, it's like the common joke. It's like Jesus. That's like Meshuggah. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, it stands for yeah weird time signatures and wonky drum beats and everything. And yeah. It's probably like, see, seeing as you guys have mentioned the D word mm -hmm. anyway, it's maybe relevant. So Meshuggah are part of this movement to some called Gent, Gent, whatever. And that's onomatopoeic to some, to, to kind of copy the sort of palm muted guitar sound that they, they, they really go for. It's with. a meme as well. It's just binary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one zero, one zero. <laughs> uh, it was supposedly started by a guy called uh, Misha Mansour. And it was like an online community. This guy yeah. basically, joined, I think he was part of Banco Periphery. Yeah, that's what he says. He definitely. was, His yeah. Name's and so he was yeah. one of the, the guys that popularized it as a movement. And there was a lot of just kids on YouTube. There was like, a, I say kids, like a huge community of people on YouTube playing this unbelievably technical stuff. I think they defined it as elastic syncopated guitar riffs. Yeah. Um, and another one I saw was uh, prog, rhythmic, and technical, accompanied by a dense layer of polyphonic groove. Yeah. So it's like really challenging. But shifting. another big part of that as well is that sort of clean guitar tone. Yeah. That a lot of them have taken in, like Tesseract used that a lot. Mm. That, you know, Mashuga has. Mnemic as well. Is yeah. that right? Mnemic. Oh, yeah, Mnemic. Yeah. Uh, periphery are a big one. Textures. Um, Fell Silent. They were. I really liked Fell Silent. Fell Silent were good. They used to do it in a Shikari, which is fucking Yeah, nuts, it was really man. odd. So There's weird. also apparently a, a bit of a movement of gent with rap as well. as a hacktivist and DVSR. Yeah, hacked, support. hacktivist. Oh, yeah. oh God. <laughs> they, most... they supported Enter Shikari quite recently. So it's, it's a really good band from Glasgow uh, called Frontier. Frontier. Yeah. Frontier, yeah. yeah. They are fucking superb. Yeah, they're incredible. <laughs> and like they've taken this genty stuff and they also... I think Carbomb are a big influence mm -hmm. on them, but Carbomb influenced by Mashuga as well mm -hmm. in the way they sort of dissect riffs and like cut everything up. But yeah, they're they're a band that do it well. Yeah, um, but it, there are so many bands that do it badly. It seems like a lot of the bands in the movement are sort of a little bit indifferent about it because there is like kind of a wee bit of dispute amongst bands that are maybe not part of the movement as to whether Gent is even a thing. I mean, yeah. like how? What, well, I don't what, think Mashuga say like they're they. They don't seem too bothered. I mean, they, they, they just sort of shrug it off. They're yeah. like, it is or it isn't. I think um, the bands that are out with it, I know that Lama God were pretty outspoken at saying Gent doesn't exist. It's not a thing. But then again, I mean, is any genre a thing? I mean, when you look at the subdivisions of genres, it's just really some somebody saying something that's as real as it is. You yeah. know, it's, it's like, is it a thing? Is, is noise rock, is skate punk a thing? Like, are any of these things uh, a thing? It annoys me when people come up and say stuff like, oh, this genre is not really a thing. It's like, well, on one hand, I can see, you know, why you would say that but on the other hand it's like we use genres to communicate it's just an adjective other. really yeah. isn't it it's just yeah, a, like, an like how, how, how do, it, how do it, you get from Black Sabbath to <laughs> uh, Sonic Youth without you know mentioning genres mm -hmm. otherwise you have to go Black Sabbath and a bit like this band and a bit like this band and then the trail would be so f to get to the next yeah it's an umbrella yeah. term that sort of is, is, is useful it, I mean you can see why journalists a, do it yeah it's a use of language yeah it's so totally if you create if you create a genre in your head then that genre exists if you create the word then that you know. I get the feeling Lama God were just a wee bit in the huff because he didn't get asked to the party. What party? <laughs> the gent party. party. <laughs> oh, the gent party. Um, Been to a few gent parties, haven't you, David? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd fucking hate a gent party. Stop fucking ripping my shug off, you cunts. <laughs> I was going to say sausage fest, but it's a different kind of gent. Neck beards. <laughs> neck beards. Uh, I want to bring up Steph Carpenter from the Deftones for a second, right? Yeah. I think this is a relevant point. Uh, he's been quite instrumental in, in the guitar sound. Mm -hmm. Of of the, the of that particular kind, I think um, it's weird because see, yeah, Adrenaline mm -hmm. by Deftones was like the kind of digga digga din din din. That kind of muted yeah, very pan muted, and he also moved over quite early to Axe Effects and being completely digital, mm -hmm. and he's used seven string guitars and eight string guitars for a long, long time. And I think he's actually worked with a lot of gent bands as well recently over the past few years. I'm pretty sure he has, but he's he's like one. I would see him as being like one of the forefathers of the sound, and and the approach and the ethos to the playing as well because mm -hmm. he does have that groove. Has like Deftones have always had that groove, even when they moved out in new metal, they've always had that groove when they've been heavy. Yeah, which, like even on like. When girls telephone boys on mm -hmm. Deftones record, like that's just got this doo -doo 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 diamond eyes. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> Diamond Days have got a Fucking lot of good it. Album. Yeah, there's definitely Chug Chug. Yeah. <laughs> chug Chug. Chug Chug. <laughs> wow. That sounds like it does me poor very quickly. I know. I know. But it's it's whoopy. <laughs> it feels a bit like maybe the Sugar move from Thrash to being kind of influenced by that kind of sound and then taking it to the next level. Yeah. Looking at their albums and going through them chronologically is really interesting because you've got your Thrash in the 90s and Destroy Rays Improve. They started doing really kind of, you know, progressive stuff. The yeah, first was, the sugar record I heard. That was a Watershed album, basically, because they had a couple of EPs, didn't they? And then they, they uh, sorry, they had an EP, then they had... They had Contradictions, contradictions collapse, collapse, then they had then none. They had none. Then they had Self Caged, I think. And then it was Desire Arrays Improve. And mm-hmm. it was like, that was the one where they seemed to really kind of yeah, take, take a step forward. literally got into the groove. Yeah, yeah. And then... True Human Decision or something like that? True Human yeah, Design? Yeah, like an EP. True Human True Design. Human design. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then... Chaos Fear. Chaos Fear. The big one. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking amazing record. Yeah, that, that was like, the first place I heard them as well. I think that was the first Meshuggah I heard as well. I think I heard... Uh, oh, fuck. I can't remember. I just had like a selection of random Meshuggah songs that I downloaded. And Chaos Fear was the first album that I bought. That's where the polyrhythms were really like prominent. Yeah, it was like this... We've got big fucking chunky riffs that are kind of going one place and then the drums are going the other. Still got this 4-4 four, four bit going out. And then, like, the vocals totally work. He's basically, he's he's sung, he could have sung one word at one tone for like 25 a, years. Like a bitch, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so God, 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 God. <laughs> but it totally fucking works because it just uh, adds this aggression to it. Because if, if Meshuggah were an instrumental band... They just wouldn't have that violence to it. You know that, that really band helps. obituary in their first, their first record, there's no lyrics because he just went in yeah. and <laughs> made noises yeah. for the full album because he didn't have any vocals. Much so like Cocktoo Twins. He's cross- <laughs> that's, that's the cross between obituary and Cocktoo Twins there. <laughs> there is a parallel. Yeah, I never yeah, thought that had happened. Um, so like, but, but Chaos Fear, that's like a really big landmark album from him. Actually, although we're saying that Meshuggah are deceptively simple and that things tend to be in 4-4 four, four and they're just kind of going over the ends of bars mm. and syncopating and stuff. I think Chaos Fear has a moment of 23-16 in it, apparently. Oh, yeah, they're definitely... <laughs> like, they they were slip pushing, in a couple of, like, special Yeah, there are in. some mad bits in yeah. there. And they also, the band being interviewed about their back catalogue, they'd said that Chaos Fear was how hard and fast can they play. Yeah. Like the, the albums all tended to feel like a feel so like nothing which came after mm. was much slower and groovier and a bit more trippy like they tried to do stuff that was more ambiently doomy and yeah. sort of strange yeah. but Chaos Fear was them they were like let's see what we're capable of. They were literally, like, setting out their own measure. They were yeah. like, how hard can we play? Um, and then you go to Nothing, and, yeah, as you say, it's like... Nothing's a kind of controversial album amongst people that are fans of the band. It seems like some people are quite disappointed by it. Felt it was a bit slow and a bit lazy. I, I love I it. I know you love it, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not... But, yeah, like, it, when it came out, and they weren't particularly happy with the recording of it, so when Ibanez eventually had gave them these eight string guitars and they went back and sort of re-recorded the whole thing and it just brings the whole album to life and like that remastered edition is fucking brilliant yeah because previously they had used a seven string but they'd like drop tuned it to a, a where it wasn't meant to be and yeah, so it's yeah, quite yeah. mushy and it hadn't really worked the way they and wanted just the, it. the whole thing the whole album sounds a bit thin but it's still got amazing riffs and like Rational Gaze is, you know, up in my top five Mashuga songs and Straws Pulled at Random is also in my top five. It's mm-hmm. maybe my favourite Mashuga track uh, that, that's on nothing and it's got, like, this breakdown towards the second half which is, like, sort of post-rocky but it's all in... It's obviously in weird time signatures but it's quite ethereal and beautiful. And they then take that part, uh, they kind of take parts of all that into uh, Catch 33 and also parts of I, their 21 minute track. Yeah, you said that's probably your favourite actual I think my favourite Mushaga release is I, just because it's so fucking intense and like, I don't know, did you, did you listen to it? Have you heard it? Oh, like, I, I, <laughs> we were, we, 
he comes up now and again but Dave Warner we, we do a thing in the van where we'll pass the iPod round and everybody yeah. gets to anonymously s- select music yeah. and Dave's got a habit of putting an eye on because it's 21 minutes 21 yeah. minutes <laughs> of ferocious music but like that f- <laughs> the first two minutes of it is just like actual noise and then it out of that comes like this just rigid structure and you know it ebbs and flows and it's just like I don't know a perfect movement you know it is a suite mm-hmm. as well and there's so many heavy riffs in there that you're just like and then basically they took that, the huge riffs and the chunk from I, and then the weird ambient bits and put all that into this one track on Catch 33 so basically. B- before we dissect the tracks of Catch 33, just to skip by that and we'll go back as well, <coughs> it was followed by Obzin. Yeah. And that is the one, see, because the press for Catch 33 was actually kind of lukewarm. Like, I, I oh, think, yeah, I remember it got, like, three out of five ratings. And yeah, there was, you know, like, stuff like, oh, in... I don't know what it's like. I think yeah. Pitchfork said they were... Uh, I think the phrase they used was, in a holding pattern. Yeah. Um, and that it was... It, it seemed to be regarded as being too dense and too impenetrable, which I think, yeah. given that it's Meshuggah, is like, is it really any denser or <laughs> yeah, more yeah, impenetrable yeah. than other stuff? Maybe people are just a bit weary. But... Um, I noticed that some of the reviews, and again, Pitchfork, for example, said mm. it, that it was obscene when they came back to life as a as a kind of creative force. And I was like, I'm not I'm not so I mean, sure I agreed. Yeah, I think, like, Obson, I think, is a great record. It's and more it's someone, so straight. Yeah, like, it's so yeah. much... It's, it's just a metal album. But it's Meshuggah doing a metal album, so it's amazing. But well, they said it was one of the most... In fact, they said to date, Obzim was the, the most technically demanding one they've done. Yeah, uh, because, like, they tried certain things on certain songs. So, like, you know, Bleed is that one that just pushed them. You know, I've tried, you know, the Pam Mutant guitar on Bleed, and I just... I don't have the wrist for that <laughs> at all. <laughs> uh, and I've got, you know, I've... Yeah, yeah. my wrist has seen some... Uh, Action. Speed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Aye, and like the drums and that, and then there's just certain parts in that album that are great. And for me, this is another thing, is like Mushuga create a record that you can listen to and enjoy, and then you go back six months later and listen to it again, you're like, fuck, I enjoy this in a completely different way. And I've done this with, I think, all their albums, is like I'll go back to them two years later and I've listened to them a load and then gone away and then I'll come back and I'll just find completely new things. And even now, I listen to Mashuga records, and I find I like notice little bits. I'm just like, where did that come from? Like, I there's a lot going on. There's so much going on, and <laughs> it's, it's, I just love finding the little bits in it. Hey guys, it's Mark here. <laughs> we, we borrowed some microphones that sound a lot better, but we had to borrow them. So and we're going to have to give them back. Yeah, so give us some money so we can buy our own. Also, should say that we now have a new web host, and that's also great, but that costs more money. So, got to just give some. Yeah, <laughs> please. That would be ideal. <laughs> that would be really nice of you. Thank you. Go to www.unsumpod.net forward slash donate and just give us whatever you can. You can either donate monthly and a recurring thing or just one off, but whatever. We'll also be giving you some quality bonus content really soon, and trust me, it's very good. Oh, it's quite ideal. Very, very (laughs) ideal. See, see when Meshuggah get it right for me, and this is, I like Meshuggah, but I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm not as, obviously, as infatuated as you, but I do really like them when they're at their best is when they know just the right point where you've had a complete sensory overload and they yeah. actually they pull back a bit to let you recover because sometimes like in stuff like I it's so relentless that uh, yeah. you do blank out for like a minute or two at a time and then yeah. you start to get in you know, recover and come back in it because it's mean, so difficult to keep track I, of I think on I like I've been listening to that track and then I'm like oh fuck I need to like go back two exactly. minutes yeah. and like I need to take that in it's again it's like reading a really dense textbook yeah. you know what I mean it's yeah. like you're trying and you're reading it and then you realise yeah. you've been reading three pages and you haven't remembered anything so you need yeah. to take a break kind of consolidate it a wee bit and I think when they're at their best is when they put a, a, a moment into their music and I think Catch 33 is probably one of the best examples of them doing it because they really judge it well like they, yeah, I, they put little pauses and breaks in so yeah, in, the overall, in Death is Death has a great break in it and it's yeah. like it just allows you just to whoa, get get your breath back 
and then you're yeah. back you're back into the mix. Um I think that is them at their best. I mean, what's the the most recent album as well, Violent Sleep of Reason? Yeah, and like, then there's Coloss before that. Sorry, Coloss, sorry as well. Yeah. I, so how do they compare like they're they're great metal albums, the great progressive metal albums, and they have some amazing parts on them. Like Coloss, when I first heard it, I wasn't that sold on it. And then I go back to it and I find fucking amazing bits on it. And now it's really up there. It's a really great record. I'm still not completely sold on the newest record, Violent Sleep of Reason. And that's, you know, that's the one that they basically recorded fully live, which is the opposite of what Catch 33 is. Mm. And that's fine. They're pushing that part as a live band um, and seeing what they can do with that. But if you look at their discography as a whole, I think it's Catch 33 that stands out as the most unique and the most progressive. And I think it's the most perfect from start to end as well, because it just it is exactly what they wanted it to be. It's this just fucking perfectly mad structured and it is them really indulging their <laughs> extreme musicianship yeah like, i mean yeah, yeah. like musicianship as well it's actually so extreme that as far as i'm aware they're certainly the only metal band i know that's got like a full academic journal yeah, yeah. article about them is yeah. like music theory spectrum it's mm. like one of the kind of properly respected music academic journals and um they did a thing in 2007 which i think is called uh, recasting metal rhythm and meter in the music of Meshuggah and mm. it's a uh, super dense <laughs> much like the music super dense technical dissection of of what it is that they're doing how they're doing it why they're doing it and you know you, you kind of wonder do the band even think about it that you know in, in such a kind of linear fashion or is yeah, it just where their instincts take just, i think now? it's maybe where their instincts it's, are it's but... been a con- pretty consistent lineup for the band and that tends yep. to when a band is consistent for a long time they can end up doing some really like bands like radiohead are another good example but it's the the same lineups so that they're progressing together, they're not constantly having to reset to incorporate someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, although, interesting so all... aside as well, I noticed that Thomas Hack had a, an accident with a router that nearly ended his drumming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a router, right. a router tool. And the, the guitarist, uh, Thorndal, mm-hmm. Thorndal, Thordanal, I can't remember, Thordanal maybe, uh, he cut off the end of one of his fingers, yeah. but it got reattached and, <laughs> and took. Uh, otherwise, he could have ended up like Tony Iommi, just yeah. doing, you know, drop D, classy riffs. Inventing heavy metal. Inventing heavy metal. <laughs> for Tony Iommi. I know, he's done all right. Um, but to, maybe it maybe makes sense to go into Catch 33 in a little bit more detail then anyway. It's, yeah. I will say off the bat, it's like, right, what, it's obviously a concept album seen as a sweet, but it seems to be the only concept album with no concept. It's like nobody knows what the concept is. I mean, the concept, is. I mean, I think the artwork has got these like snakes like, that it, are like all sort of... Three intertwining snakes. Intertwining yeah. and... I mean, I don't know, what does Catch 33 mean? Fuck no, it's, it's, I read that it's kind of whimsical. Did they not say it was about yeah. paradoxes? Yeah, ex- so I think it's like the album art is like a sort of physical paradox of these snakes sort of eating each other. And then, I mean, fuck I'll, knows I'll, what I'll, the li- I haven't read the lyrics. I, like, I, well, I was going to say, see in, um, in Thomas Heller's book, um, Catch 22, uh-huh. Catch 22 is one of a number of catches. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You know, exactly. So I, I wonder, I, it's been a long time since I read it, so I don't actually know if... In the book, he goes up to 33. Up to 33. There, there could well I'm not be. Sure. I can't I'm not sure, actually. If he does. Yeah, like, so it starts off, and, like, the first six tracks are just, like, basically take off where nothing ended, and just, like, this... You know, it's got that Mashuga groove and it builds up and it builds up and they like add another layer of guitar. And it's maybe it starts off kind of weakly in a way because those six tracks aren't ever the ones that I go back to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd seen criticism of those six tracks that said they were too typically Mashuga. Yeah. Almost it was like they were they were reusing uh, like certainly the central riff that was there was a suggestion they were reusing some of the kind of riffs from the likes of Chaosphere. Yeah, or that. I think in that album, I think it works perfectly in this album because you're basically like it's like teasing you, you're like oh yeah, this is a Meshuggah album. We've got six tracks of that, even though some of them were short. And then just yeah, out like of a nowhere, minute, a minute and a half, and stuff, yeah, 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 just out of nowhere, Minds Mirrors comes on and like just chops it, stops it. Yeah, and it's it's really well timed. I would say just before that though, in like the fourth track the paradoxical spiral mm-hmm. there's a really nice little kind of like 
low riff yeah, 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 that, yeah. That, that kind of breaks things up mm-hmm. really well and it's pretty mean. Mashaga is also about waiting and knowing what you're going to get yeah and knowing what's coming that goes back to composition you know a lot of the best classical music is about knowing what's coming up next and that sort of yeah they, they do a lot of drift where like you know yeah. things will start out with a certain arrangement and one instrument or maybe even two will drift uh it will start to phase with the other things mm-hmm. so there'll be like a guitar will go from being on a beat to half a yeah. beat behind to a quarter and it'll just start to like move about in that bar but when it realigns something happens so there is a lot of anticipation you're right yeah and it's quite unsettling as well in that sense and then minds mirrors comes in and you do you feel like you've needed that break because you've listened to these six tracks and you're like oh, it's quite incessant <laughs> it's got that super <laughs> creepy vocoder thing in it as yeah. Well. yeah it's bizarre <laughs> the feelings racing on my starry soul gnawing voraciously at the bones the exoskeletal patchwork and it's just the most <laughs> down, it sounds like a fucking earthquake that you know bass string that's just like floating yeah and you can hear how loose it is it's yeah, just, it's just, just you can actually the individual bass yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah that weird sort of tremolo high guitar and it I don't know like introduces this sense of like unease um, is that Thomas Hack's vocal on that song I think he's doing oh the vo- yeah I think yeah. it is actually yeah. yeah and then In Death Is Life oh my god In Death Is Life is Fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's a fucking a, peach, man. Oh, that's that's a really great bit of music. I think it might be... I think it might be the peak of heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> like, how can it get better than that? Just that riff is so unreal. And yeah, what did you say, Chris? Like you were listening to it in the gym, and you really... Oh no, that, 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 I, 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 like, I was on a rowing machine. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I was on a, I was on a like a cycling machine. It was like my is actually surprisingly good music to yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. to do that to you know. And it, like honestly, like and it got me going so much. I nearly got that thing moving right out the window. <laughs> it was <laughs> mental. Like it's, it's just like because it just just it just arrives so hard. It's just yeah, like totally. it's, it's brilliant. And then from in death is life. Goes to in death is death. Yeah, but you've got like that mad jazz interlude and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're just totally fucking with you, and it's so. It doesn't sound like any other like metal record really at all. I I think in death is death is the best bit of music they've done. From what I've heard, and I've, admittedly yeah. I'm not an aficionado, mm-hmm. but from what they've done, I think that's the, the best. It's got all the elements. It's got the, I mean, the riff at, at 30 seconds in, yeah. that staccato riff is yeah. just unbelievable. I mean, that is so good. Um, and then it's got it's got the ugliness, it's got the time drift, it's got the creepy ending. It's, it's it's a distillation, I think, of yeah. what's really interesting about that band. Yeah, and then it's <laughs> ominous again. It builds up, builds and, up, and, and this then is, you've got the final movement. And this is the other bit as well. That so the, the, it goes, it, it reemerges in shed, which yeah. is the start of the final movement. Mm. And I've listened to this album a number of times now, and even though I know it's coming, I still get a fright. Because <laughs> this, this, by this point, I'd moved on to the rowing machine, right? Aye. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in the rowing machine. I've yeah. probably done about three minutes. I'm pretty shattered, <laughs> <laughs> and. The way they've mixed it, the scream, like the stereo image, the scream comes from yeah. behind your head, and it literally felt every single time <laughs> like somebody was screaming from behind my head. It was very, very unnerving. Yeah, I got that on the train the other day as well. I was like, what the, f- what the fuck is that? <laughs> and it's just, and it, it comes in so direct and sh- for the back of your head, moves about the stereo image. Yeah. And round to the front, and it is like somebody's just leaned over you and started screaming at you. Yeah. <laughs> and then that final, yeah, that, those final four tracks are Did just you hear like, my eyes, man, holy shit. Oh, man. 
and <laughs> unreal. And then like personal non grat has just got these like mad coiling riffs going on. And then it finishes on some, <laughs> which is like, fuck a horse, man. <laughs> like, how, how do you make that sound so heavy? It's unreal. <laughs> I don't know it's like euphoric but also like so fucking dark as well it's I mean, and, then it, and then it just like winds down and then you just hit play again <laughs> this is this is probably the most excited we've all been at the same time about <laughs> an individual record but the only thing i can predict here is that people will disagree in the choice of the record i don't yeah. think there's any doubt like Meshuga, albeit they've never become like this hugely commercially successful band because they're so difficult but they're such an important band musically, yeah. especially for metal fans. That you just it would be a pointless venture if you didn't have them involved in any discography of like mm-hmm. holiday Agony. stuff. Yeah. But I think there's going to be a fair amount of disagreement on the on the album itself. That's it's fine. Just just even <laughs> taking like a straw poll of people. Yeah. Like, it was like it was really interesting that everybody had a different perspective, and I would probably initially have picked Chaos Fear as well. Although I would go between that and this now. Mm-hmm. Um, also, given that the albums have a different feel as well, it's like... Yeah, I mean, I mean, they all do very different things. I just feel like all the other albums are metal albums with songs. Yeah, that's a fair point. And yeah. then this is like, this is... This is this is more prog. them <laughs> trying something that nobody's done before, and it's so much more different than anything else. I don't know, I just had this image. See those first six tracks? It's like you're going upstairs, mm-hmm. climbing up a ladder, and then Mind's Mirror come on, and then you're waiting, and then... The rest of the album's this fucking mad water slide <laughs> through hell and sharks and everything. And it's the best fucking water slide on earth. That's what this album is. I don't so, know if we, we can top that. Yeah, so, like, yeah. like, the ladder's great. You know, it's a lovely ladder, but then that fucking water slide is worth it. Pretty well. creepy ladder. <laughs> so a bit, of a, bit of a Jacob's ladder, to be honest. So, I guess this one goes out in the sography then. Well, uh, if it doesn't, I, think, I quit. Yeah, I mean, but to be fair, <laughs> but no, it's fair. Like, there's no danger that people aren't going to back Meshuggah again in here. I think it's yeah, more yeah, yeah. whether or not they vote for this. If album. they listen to this, this yeah, because like voting. I said, <laughs> <laughs> David, <laughs> do you want um, to do that? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, like I say, I think just given that there was like a lukewarm reception critically, yeah. um, maybe our gauge is just a little off in this one. Like, I'm, I'm kind of with you on it. Um, but I'm aware that other people might not be. I do know that a lot of people really like Obzen, and a I do know that a lot of people said to me as well that Obzen would be like yeah. the one. And a lot of That's people like Chaos. Like, they got in a sugar late. They were like, "Oh, that song Bleed is cool." Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's and, do sugar. And the other one is Chaos Fear <laughs> because it was such a. That was the moment where they were suddenly in all the, me- oh, they, the metal press. Yeah, it was like they were in the metal press anyway. But Chaos Fear was one where it was like, "Holy shit!" I announced shit. them as something yeah. completely different to all the other bands out there. So I think that could be the own. Those that's some likeliest obstacle to this getting the thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't take it too personally. It's fine. I mean, if that is the way that it goes, then everybody's wrong and I'm right. But it's, <laughs> I can accept that. And uh, nothing has changed. <laughs> My flatmate said to me, he was like, I said, man, Cash City is really, really good. And he's like, yeah, for a lot of bands, that'd be like the career masterpiece. But then they did obs in. Wrong. You and he'll meet at a party one day. <laughs> yeah, I know. That'll be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the two guys in the back room. Don't go into that room. There's, <laughs> there's two guys in there arguing about my shit. Guys. <laughs> get some shit, so. there's, there's always a room at parties that I go to where there's guys arguing about my sugar. I know. Going to the wrong kind of parties. <laughs> <laughs> That's the my room. Don't go in there. It's basically binary. <laughs> so I guess we're a unanimous on this one. Well, we are. We yeah. are. And the space. public should be as well. If not, they'll be hell to pay. <laughs> <laughs> we first coming to you. You're right, he's going to kneecap you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go go and vote on our Facebook page. That'll be awesome if you could do that. Also, we really like reviews on iTunes. We've had some lovely ones lately. So please, please, if you can find it in your heart, find it in your iPhone, please go and give us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. So what we're doing next week, Christopher? We are going to do the album 23 by Blonde Redhead. Interesting point. The end of this album actually goes very well with the start of that record. They, 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 what does that mean? They well, catch quite, 33 yeah, going into They merge quite well together. Mm. They've got yeah. the, you just subtract 10 as well. Yeah. Really? Uh, mm. Honestly, because of, cause of the, way, interesting mix, cause of the way it ends, it ends like quite, like some ends quite like calmly. Honestly. 
you've got uh, interesting listening habits. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> so you guys brought it on. But yeah, gentlemen, thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.